Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to share a little word with you today. I was uh, meditating on this earlier today. And, you know, it's two total different mindsets that come from two totally different belief systems. And, um, you know, we're either believing uh, in the false wisdom that came from the serpent or we're believing the logic that came through Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's a brand new way of thinking. Amen. That's why Jesus said to repent, to change the way you think, and um, believe the gospel. In Proverbs 18, 12, uh, 18, 10 through 12, it says, The name of the Lord. You know the name the name of a person represents their character, okay? And the Lord has such impeccable character uh, that you can trust him. And you know, it says the name of the Lord. Now, whenever you see that word Lord in capitals, it is Jehovah or I am, okay? The name of the Lord is is a strong tower the I am you know that is just that just brings such comfort to my heart the I am says to me um, he's my strong tower that means I am right now it's not just 4,000 years ago he was a strong tower but I am right now a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. You know, when you have been declared righteous by our Heavenly Father, there's no fear, there's no trepidation. We, in trouble, we just run to the safe haven, which is Christ, and we run into Him and we're safe. Amen. That is glorious. You know, it's just like um, if a child has a bad dream and uh, he's afraid of, of some phantom thing in his, his nightmare. He goes running, screaming into his daddy's arms. That's the picture that I get right here. Amen. The righteous know where to run. Amen. But the rich man's wealth is his strong city. And as a high wall in his own conceit. Look at that. The person that trusts in the arm of flesh, his own wealth that he has built is his strong city. He thinks that that's going to be his um, protection, that that's going to be his safe haven. But you know something? The scripture says money can take wings and fly away. Where is that man's strong city? If everything was to be gone, he would find himself uh, totally naked and without any strength. And you know, this, the next verse says, Before destruction, the heart of a man is hardy, and before honor is humility. You know something? For people that put their trust in riches, I would, it would be better for that person to have a tsunami uh, of financial destruction and come to the end of himself and realize he needs to put his trust in the Lord than to live all of his days in uh, believing that his riches were his safety because, you know, at the end of his days, He's just going to be destroyed. Oh, that is so sad. And you know, James 4.10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. You know, at any time a person uh, can just realize, humble themselves that they need God. Amen. You know, in, in Jeremiah 17.5, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Thus saith, that's capital, Thus saith the I am. Cursed 
or under a curse. Under a curse is the person that believes uh, in the arm of his own flesh. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord, from the I am. For he shall be like a heath in the desert. You know, a heath is like a, a tumbleweed. There's no life in it. It just blows around. Okay, wherever the wind blows, it blows. It's like a heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. Why won't he see when good cometh? Because he's not looking for it. He's not looking to God for anything. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of Light. No, this man is looking to his own arm to sustain him. It says, he won't see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. I mean, you know, nothing can grow in salt. But blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, that trusts in the I am, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river. Oh my goodness, this is a lush place. And shall not see when heat comes. Now look at the, the, that. Both of these people don't see something. The person that trusts in his own arm doesn't see when good comes. But the guy that's trusting in the Lord, he don't see when trouble comes. Because you know what? That heat always represents fire, tribulation, trouble. But even during the time of heat, her leaf shall be green and shall, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I mean, this is so glorious because we get our sustenance from the Lord. It doesn't make any difference if it's a year of drought. It doesn't make any difference if the trouble is hot. Amen. We get our sustenance from God and we will continue to yield fruit. Amen. And our leaves won't even wither. Praise the Lord. That is such good news. Hallelujah. The best news is to be going through trouble and not feeling it. Amen. Hallelujah. But our trust is in the Lord. He is the one that sustains us. In Matthew 12, 34, Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, O generation of vipers. You know, this is the um, descendants of a viper. You know, what he's saying is, you, your belief system is from the, the serpent. You have the seed of the serpent. He says, how can you being evil, speak good things. Now that word evil, that word evil means toil and labor. So the way they perceive things is it's all works. It's all um, toil and labor. So he says, hey guys, how can you, who has the seed of the serpent as a mentality, speak good things. You can't because it's all labor. Okay. He says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that is so important. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Your mouth cannot speak anything different than what your heart believes. It's like your mouth is hooked up to your heart. And so your mouth doesn't speak independently of your heart. It can only speak what is in your heart. And that's why James said that the tongue can't be tamed. You can't tame a tongue. No, what you have to do is change the belief system in the heart because the mouth 
is energized by the heart. And, um, oh, I just love that chapter in James because he says, you know, with the mouth you bless God and then you curse your brother. He said these things ought not to be. Amen? Uh, I'm going to go there. I wasn't going to, but I'm going to. Amen. Because I think it's so very, very important. He says, he says this, he says in verse 3, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also ships, which though they be great, are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. What it's saying is, a great beast like a horse, this heavy, heavy horse, you can turn them about with just a little bit in their mouth. As you pull that rein, you turn them, you turn them. And a ship, a great big ship, can be turned about with such a little governor. Amen. A rudder. Just steer it the way that you want it to go. It says, even so, the tongue is a little member, just a little thing in this whole body. It says, and boast us great things. Behold our great a matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature. And that word course is wheel of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. My goodness, we need, we need our mouths to speak good things. But you can't train your mouth to speak good things. No, the mouth is controlled by the heart. It says every kind of beast of birds and serpents and the things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. You can't tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Doth a fountain send forth of the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a mind, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Who is a wise man that is endued with knowledge? I'll tell you who a wise man is. A man that sucks up the bread of life and fills his heart with the bread of life so that there is no room for anything but the life of God in their heart and therefore their mouth can only bless and not curse. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of his good conversation his lifestyle his works with meekness and wisdom. But if we have bitter envying and strife in our hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Okay? So if, we, if we're into envy and strife, We've got the wrong belief system in our heart because now we're, uh, you know, like uh, in the rat race that we've got to put somebody down to make ourselves feel good. Oh, my goodness. It says where there is envy and strife, there's confusion, disorder, and every evil work. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle 
and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality. There's no respecter of persons. You just want to bless everybody. And without hypocrisy, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Amen. So you see, it's very important. It's very important that our heart is believing the right thing because out of the abundance of the heart, our mouth is going to speak. Amen. You know what? You don't have to, you don't have to say anything. Just let somebody speak for a while. And you'll find out what their belief system is. Because out of the abundance of the heart, they're going to speak. And uh, their mouth reveals what's in the heart. Amen. Because the mouth is a manifestation of what's in the heart. And you know, the word of faith, um, they, they took that and they tried to tame the tongue they would make all the right confessions. And it really was a, a labor and a toil. And um, But you know what? You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There is an importance to what we say. But it is what we say needs to be propelled by what we believe. It's not just saying the right words. It's believing the right thing. And so it's all about getting our heart filled with the good news. Amen. But you know, um, the scripture says in Proverbs 4.23, this is one of my favorite scriptures. I think for the first 10 years of my Christian life, this was my go-to scripture. Keep thy heart with all diligence. I mean, you've got to be diligent what, what you allow in your heart. You can't just listen to anything. For out of it is the issues of life. Out of your heart flows the issues of life. You are going to live by what flows out of your heart whether it be good or whether it be bad. I mean, the, the, the person that is still under the, um, the curse of the knowledge of good and evil is eating the fruit of their own lips. They're believing the wrong thing, they're saying the wrong thing, and they're eating the fruit of their lips. It says, keep your heart with all diligence and put away from thee a froward tongue. Now, you can't put away from you a froward tongue. You can only put away from you a froward tongue by keeping your heart with all diligence. You see, you put away a froward tongue, which is twisted, distorted, and crooked. In other words, that tongue is a contradiction to what God says, okay? And you can't expect to be speaking contradictory things against the goodness of God and expect to prosper. Hello? Amen. So we put away that twisted and crooked, distorted um, verbiage as our hearts are filled with the goodness of God and the love of God. So therefore, we can only bless. Amen. We don't just bless God, but we can actually bless our enemies. Amen. When our hearts are filled with the goodness of God. It says, put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. And you know that word perverse means to depart or turn aside, okay? And you know, if we forget what manner of man we are, if we forget who we are, we can turn aside from the good way and find yourself uh, speaking things that are very contrary to the truth. 
Proverbs 12, 13 says, The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. He is actually ensnared or caught by bait by the very words that come out of his mouth. It says, but contrary, but the just or the justified or the uncompromisingly righteous person shall come out of troubles, out of straits, distress and adversity. His mouth, the just, shall come out. But you know that word come? It means to be led out or to cause to come out. In other words, when our mouth is lining up with the truth, then the Holy Spirit leads us out of that trouble. Because we're aligned. We're in union. We're confessing or saying the same as God is saying. God says, I am your deliverer. I am your fortress. I am your rock. And we say, yes, amen, amen you are. And God leads us right out of that trouble. But if, you, if God is saying, I am your rock, I am your source, I am what you need, and, and our mouth is contrary to what God is saying, can we expect his delivering power in our lives? Amen. You know, Jesus said, all things are possible to those that believe. But you know what? We have to believe what God says. Amen. If we want to see the result. In Proverbs 28.1, it says, the wicked flee when no man pursues. The wicked flee when no man pursues. You know, the wicked ha have a um, evil conscience. They are, they are under the curse and they're afraid. They're living in fear. And they run when nobody's running after them. And that word pursue means to chase and to hunt down. It says, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Why is the wicked man running when nobody's running after him? And yet the righteous are as bold as a lion. Because the righteous, their confidence is in God. They don't have to run from anything because they're living in the secret place of the Most High God. He is their protection. Amen. You're as bold as a lion. Glory to God. Now look at this. The wicked flee when no man pursues. Okay. And yet Psalm 23, 6 says, Surely or for sure, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's the same word. The wicked are running when nobody's running after them. And the righteous are are being pursued and hunted down by goodness. How can this be? Because the righteous, their mouth lines up with what God says, and they expect goodness. I mean, my father is good, and he only has good, and he wants to be good to me, so I'm expecting it. And surely, for sure, goodness and mercy are going to hunt me down and take me over. Amen. All the days of my life. Boy, there is a lot in the Proverbs about what we say. In Proverbs 13, 21, it says, Evil pursues sinners. Evil or that word evil here, this isn't toil and labor. This is a different word. This is bad, unpleasant, giving pain, unhappiness, and misery. Pursue, run after, chase, and persecute sinners. 
My goodness. And a sinner, that word sinner there means exposed to condemnation. You see, this is a person that has not had their heart sprinkled from the pure water. They have not received the gift of righteousness and they're still under the curse. And they're exposed to every lie, every condemnation, every accusation against you. It just goes into their heart because they have no shield of faith. You know, in Isaiah 54, it says, it says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But every t word, every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord. For their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Unless we are established in righteousness, when an evil accusation comes against you, you won't have any shield of faith to be able to withstand those fiery darts of the wicked one. But when you know who you are and that you have a righteousness that has been gifted to you by the Father, you say, I, receive, I don't receive that. That is not in line with what my Father says. That is a contradictory thought. And you know what? I cast that down and I do not receive it. But that's what pursues the person that has not received the gift of righteousness. They're exposed to all condemnation. It says, but to the righteous, that is the just, the vindicated by God, good shall be repaid. In other words, the same way as all this nasty stuff is running after the evil person, it says good, pleasant, agreeable to the senses. Everything that will make you happy is coming after you. And it's, it's that word shall be repaid. It means to be in a covenant of peace. You're in a tranquil place. Wow. Praise God. Hallelujah. No wonder David said it is more blessed to, um, oh, what did he say? To have a morsel of food than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. I would sooner have just my bare necessities and have the peace of God than to live in some palatial a dwelling place with all that nonsense of, of turbulence and disturbance and lack of peace. My goodness, I just want to be able to lay me down at night and go to sleep and sleep like a baby. Amen. Glory to God. It says the mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. You know why the righteous man constantly draws from the well of salvation, constantly drinking this living water. And so he's a well of life. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life. He's got nothing but good to say about anybody to anybody because the only thing he's got in his heart is goodness. Amen. It says, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And that word violence is false, wrong, and oppressor. Oh my goodness. You, you can hear that? The mouth of the wicked is aligned with the mouth of the oppressor or the accuser. I don't want to do Satan's bidding for him. Oh no. I want, I want the love of the Lord to flow out of my mouth. It says, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. And you know, that word covereth, it means 
to be overwhelmed. To be overwhelmed or to be dressed in. In other words, the mouth of the wicked is clad with nothing but falsehood and oppression. Amen. And, and that word wicked is the guilty. So, I mean, you know, as I just think about this, I just think of people uh, that don't know the Lord, that don't know the Father's goodness, that are still under the curse of living from the, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. And they're an open target to every demonic attack and accusation. And they are hurting, man. They are hurting. And the only thing they know to do is to hurt and to, to speak evil of people to give themselves some kind of comfort in this twisted uh, life that they're living, that they can, they can think by putting another person down that it's going to make them feel better. Listen, that is no part of our life. You know, we are children of the light, and we walk in the light. We don't walk as children of the darkness. Amen? We don't walk in envy and strife. It's impossible to walk in envy and strife. If our heart is being filled to overflowing with the goodness of our Heavenly Father. It says, hatred stirs up strife. That word hatred is a hater, an enemy, and joined together with. In other words, hatred is in league with the devil. The devil is the destroyer, the separator, the divider. And when we have that kind of a belief system in our heart that, that we are what we do, that we are... We can only be accepted by God through toil and labor. We are filled with anxiety and anger. And we will try to find our relief in putting others down or stirring up strife. In other words, if I'm feeling bad about myself, then I'm going to and let's say somebody said something bad against me. Then what I want to do is go and get somebody on my side to be on my side against that person. That's bringing division and strife and all of that comes from having an evil conscience. Amen. It says, but love covereth all sins. You know, when we're in love, we're in league, we're in union with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And is all we want to do is spread the love, amen, spread the unity, glory to God. Praise the Lord. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Uh, and what I want you to understand, and I see this so clearly, the Father wants us to believe what he believes and get our heart filled with what he believes, which is nothing but good. And and He he's just got a plan for us and and uh, peace, and everything is good, amen? And he wants us to believe that. And as we believe that, then out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. And we can say with Paul, I, uh, he, as he was quoting David, he said, it is written, I believe, therefore I speak. He says, and we having the same spirit of faith, or the same persuasion, 
we believe, therefore we speak. And so we align our hearts with what God believes, and then we confess with our mouth the same thing that God believes. And we actually become co-laborers with God, amen, that he can work through us and bring his kingdom into this earth as it is in heaven because we are rightly aligned with him and we are just speaking the same thing and we don't expect anything but the goodness of God. Amen? But people that do not have the logic of God in their heart are believing um, that they are condemned, they are miserable, and out of the abundance of their misery, they speak vile and horrible things, and it's destructive, and their mouth is in league with the enemy. You've got to understand something. God wants a body to work through in this world, and so does Satan. And you know what? I don't want any part of his nonsense, amen? I just want to make myself available for the goodness of God to operate. And you could say, well, you know, that's all well and good, sister. But that's the Old Testament. We're under a new covenant. Well, you know what? Let's see what Peter said. In 1 Peter 3.10, he says, for he that would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. And that word evil is not such as it ought to be. Okay, my mouth has not been made to say things that ought not to be or contrary to God. Injurious. My mouth was not created to injure people, to hurt people, but my mouth was given to me to bless people and to speak kind things to them so that they may feel the love of God or harmful. My mouth was not created to say harmful things to people or destructive. My mouth was not created to put people down but to build them up, amen, hallelujah, and keep his lips from speaking guile. And that word guile is deceit or craftiness. In other words, don't speak things that are the seed of the serpent. But you know what? You can't stop yourself from saying things if your heart is not filled with that which causes the mouth to speak. Your mouth is just going to speak whatever you've been putting in it. Amen. So it says, um, so don't speak any uh, deceit. It says, let him eschew evil. That word eschew means to avoid Turn away from. Turn away. You know, sometimes you can you can have a situation where somebody's talking and there's a temptation to enter into the conversation, but you get a check in your spirit. Like, don't go there, don't engage, okay? And that's what it's saying. Avoid, turn away from anything that is not as it ought to be or if it's injurious. I mean, you know what? If somebody's talking about somebody and putting somebody down, uh, you know what? Don't get into that. I would even say overcome evil with good and say something kind to uh, just um, squash that thing because it's a fire being kindled 
And uh, we don't want to kindle no fire. We want to extinguish that fire. And so let's put a bucket of water on it and say, well, you know, let's pray for them. Let's stop it right there. Nip that sucker in the bud, you know. Don't engage. Don't engage because you know what? That's the, that's the devil's thing. Divide and conquer, you know. Let's, uh, let's keep peace. Let's keep unity and let's bind together and say, you know what? Well, if there's a problem, let's just pray the Lord would really bless them and blah, blah, whatever. Amen. But get out of that situation. Don't be a part of it. It says, um, let him eschew evil, okay, and do good. That's it right there. Do good. Say something good. Let him seek peace. You know, that word seek is to, to pursue in order to get the thing you're going after. Seek peace. And that word peace is rest and quietness and ensue it. That means to run swiftly in order to catch a person or a thing to run after. Let us seek peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I just thought that was a very, very encouraging word. And, um, you know, I just want us to be wise uh, that the enemy wants to use our tongues to um, work against us and to work against others. Amen. And we say, hey, not here, Bubba Lou. No way. You're not using my mouth. My mouth is only available for the spirit of the Lord to bless people. I don't want to bless God and curse people. I want to bless God and I want to bless people. And I want to, um, I just want to stay in that wonderful relationship of my, my heart being filled with the love of God so that I can just love everybody. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, beloveds. You have a blessed evening. Amen. Hallelujah.